Hello students, welcome to my class. This is Professor Vincent Desire and this is part one of chapter one presentation. Chapter one, accounting and the business environment. This chapter zero in on two issues. Number one, accounting and number two, business environment. So we are going to talk about the basics of accounting and the environment in which accounting operates. And of course, that is uh, the business environment. Our overall objective is threefold. Number one, we are going to uh, try to understand accounting principles or accounting rules and how to apply them as number one. Then number two, we are based on our understanding and the application of the accounting principles, we should be able to prepare some useful uh, financial reports that are used for different decision making. And number three, uh, we need to talk about uh, different techniques for analyzing the information. So more on all these issues uh, later. Now let's take a look at the learning objectives. We have six of them here. Uh, number one, explain why accounting is important and the users of accounting information. Uh, number two, number three, we are going to go through all of them uh, relatively in, de uh, in details uh, in a few minutes. So let's take a look at uh, the first objective. Here we are going to explain why accounting is important and list the users of accounting information. So two issues here. Why is accounting important? Who are the users of accounting information? Now, <clears throat> so the question, why is accounting important? We are going to talk about why accounting is important by talking about the definition of accounting. Take a look at the, what the textbook said about accounting. It said accounting is the information system that measures business activities, processes the information into reports, communicates the result to decision makers. Let us zero in on some of the key words in understanding the, the, this definition. And the first word I want to zero in on is the word uh, system. The question is, what is a system? Forget about accounting now, just pure English. What is a system? We said that a system is a set of related parts or pieces put together that make a meaningful whole or a set of uh, a connected pieces of parts that make a meaningful whole. My favorite example is uh, automobile. It's automobile. So you have a car and your car consists of different pieces, different parts. When you put all those parts together, they make a meaningful whole. And the purpose of that uh, uh, automobile is to take it from point A to point B. So here we are saying that accounting is the information system. So we are looking at accounting as a system. So what are the pieces? What are the related components that we are talking about here? So let's come back home. Here, think about the, a typical accounting department where you have uh, the accountants are in the accounting department. That is part of the piece. You have furniture and features, you have equipment, you have computer hardware, you have computer software, you have filing cabinets, you have accounting records, different types of accounting records. Put all those pieces together, you have a meaningful whole. Now the question is, what is the purpose of this system, meaning of this accounting system? The purpose, just like your automobile, is to get it from point A to point B, for accounting system, the main purpose is to produce useful information that we use for, uh, 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 for decision making. So, before we said that, so we said that accounting is the, is the information system. So the system is put together primarily to, for us to come up with valuable information that we use for different purposes. Now, in addition to that, the system also helps us to measure business activities. Okay, and then, uh, for example, business transactions have to be measured. Then the system also helps us to process the information, or I don't like the word they use here, I would say data. The system also helps us to process the data into reports, and uh, then ultimately we communicate the result 
to decision makers or different constituencies that use the information for different uh, purposes. So here you have it for the definition of accounting and why it is important. It is important because it helps us uh, with all of these things. Primarily, it helps us uh, to come up with the valuable information that we use for different purposes. Now, moving along, let's take a look at the pathways visual model. Uh, so this was uh, put together uh, by uh, a pathway commission. Essentially, in summary, what we have here is this. A lot of people look at accountants as boring and dry people. And that is so far from the truth. The part of the matter is accountants are very instrumental, they are very important in helping the society in so many different ways, in providing valuable information to the society that the society uses for different purposes. Think about it on a daily basis in a society, decisions involving hundreds and millions and billions of dollars are being made. And people have to use account information before they are able to make those decisions. You will be amazed how many things our accountants do. We are very involved in different areas in the society and like I said, accounting is not boring at all. You know, accountants work for FBI, we work for different establishments uh, 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 throughout the society. Now, moving along, decision makers, the users of accounting information. Here we are breaking accounting into two broad categories. We have financial accounting and we have managerial accounting. Either way, we are still talking about a situation whereby a system is being put together to process, to measure business transactions, process the underlying data and ultimately produce financial statements or produce financial report or information uh, that is eventually communicated to different constituencies. Now, when the focus of doing that or communicating information for external decision makers, we call that financial accounting. In other words, financial accounting zero in on providing useful information for external uh, decision makers, while managerial accounting zero in on internal decision makers. Okay, internal decision makers would be uh, management of the company and other people within the company that use account information for different uh, decision making. For external users, we are talking about the creditors, potential investors, the government, so on and so forth. Moving along, again, we are still, taking, we are still looking at the uh, the two broad categories of accounting, financial and uh, managerial accounting. Like I just said, financial accounting zero in on providing information, accounting information for external decision makers, while managerial accounting zero in on assisting insiders uh, uh, with accounting information to make uh, uh, decisions. Now, let's take a look at the accounting profession. Here, first of all, let's take a look at types of accountant. Two primary types of accountant, but we actually have different types of accountant. But here, we are zeroing on two primary CPAs. Uh, those are certified public accountants. They serve the general public. We call them certified public accountants. Uh, for you to be a certified public accountant, you need to take a very difficult examination when you pass, you become a CPA. Then we also have another professional. A, a, a certificate we call it CMA, Certified Management Accountants. Those are professionals or accountants that zero in on uh, how to provide uh, valuable accounting information for internal users. Now, here we have different accounting positions. We have, set, I mean, this is in its simplest form, public, private, governmental, and there are uh, dozens of different areas uh, in these uh, positions. Moving along, here uh, is a comparison of accounting uh, uh, positions with their different salary range. You can go through that uh, by yourself. 
Again, as you can see, we have different types of positions in the accounting uh, uh, field. Moving along, let's take a look at the uh, learning objective two. Describe the organizations and rules that govern accounting. So we have two issues here. Organizations that have a big impact on the accounting profession and the rules that govern accounting. Moving along, what are the organizations and rules that govern accounting? First of all, here are two extremely important organizations. There are a lot of organizations uh, that have influence on accounting, but the two primary ones are these two. Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB, and SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. Now, what is the relationship? Remember, I told you from the outset that one of the things that we are going to do in this whole course is learning accounting rules. We also call it accounting principles and how to apply them. The question is, who creates these rules? Who is responsible for coming up with them? The United States Congress has the ultimate authority to come up with accounting rules. And of course, the United States Congress doesn't want to be bothered. What they did was they gave that responsibility to a federal government agent agency called Security and Exchange Commission. You know, we have different types of federal government agents. We have the FBI, we have CIA, we have Internal Revenue Service, and all these agencies are responsible for different functions for the federal government. So we have another one, we call it the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is a very important uh, federal government agency. The, this agency is primarily responsible for policing the financial securities market. What does that mean? In other words, they are the federal government eye and ear to make sure that everybody that plays in the financial security market, stocks, bonds, commodities, so on and so forth, everybody that plays in those markets have to play by the rules. If you don't, this uh, uh, agency can put you in jail. So this agency is very important. Now, this agency said, we don't have time to create accounting rules. So what they did was they passed the responsibility on to another organization called FASB, Financial Accounting Standard Board. It's a non-for-profit organization. And definitely you are going to see this on your exam. As a matter of fact, these two uh, 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 organizations on your exams in terms of what they do. So moving along, let's take a look at what are the organizations and rules that govern uh, accounting. So we, we just talked about that. The question is, what are the rules that govern accounting? This is extremely important, okay? You need to carry this. Now, look at what we said, accounting guidelines, okay? What do we call them? We call them generally accepted accounting principles. This is gonna be on your exam, okay? Take a note. This is the fancy name we call it in, the, in our profession, but in other English, actually this also means rules. Or another word we use for it is um, standards. Accounting standards. Listen to me very carefully. It is important for you to understand this from the outset. These three words are used interchangeably. We call them generally accepted accounting principles. We also call them accounting rules. We also call them accounting standards. Okay? Now, having said that, we are going to talk more about this eventually. Let's take a look at what we have here. The next thing we have here. We said that for accounting information to be useful for whomever, the information should have two ingredients or the information should meet two requirements. Number one, the information has to be relevant. The information 
has to be faithfully representative. What does that mean when we say the information has to be relevant? Relevant information makes a difference. In other words, if the information does not make a difference as to whether you make a decision one way or the other, then it is irrelevant. So we said that for account information has to be useful, it has to be relevant. Number two, it has to be faithfully represented faithfully representative. That sounds like a big word. What that is simply means is the information should represent the transaction or event that actually happened. So if you buy an equipment for $10,000, you record it for $10,000. So that information should actually represent what actually happened. So that is what we mean by faithfully representative. Now, Let's take a look at some of these fancy accounting rules, okay? Now, a lot of people, if you tell some people that uh, you are an accountant or you are majoring in accounting, uh, the first thing that comes to their mind is, oh my goodness, you must be very good in math. Yes, you need to be good in math to be an accountant, but you don't have to be a math ways. Accounting is not, accounting is difficult not because of the math that is involved, it is difficult because of understanding bunch of rules or accounting principles and how to apply them to get what we want. So here are some of the rules. So right now we are going to roll up our sleeves and talk extensively about accounting rules, okay? Now here's the number one. We call it the economic entity assumption. That's a big word, the economic entity assumption. What does that mean? Listen to this carefully, you need to catch this. What this is saying is, this is very important. Look at, the key word is what? The key word here is assumption. So in business world, or for business purposes, we have an assumption that says that 